各位现场的贵宾、线上的观众朋友们，欢迎莅临唐奖第五届颁奖典礼。首先为各位介绍得奖人以及贵宾，有请唱名道的得奖人以及贵宾起身挥手致意。Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, online viewers, esteemed laureates, welcome to the 2022 Tang Prize Laureates Award Ceremony. As we gather here to celebrate excellence and achievement of Tang Prize laureates, it is my honor to invite our esteemed laureates to rise from their seats when called and graciously acknowledge the presence of this esteemed audience. 首先欢迎唐奖第五届永续发展奖得奖人杰佛瑞·萨克斯教授。2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Sustainable Development, Professor Jeffrey D. Sachs. 唐奖第五届生技医药奖得奖人卡塔琳·塔里科教授。2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Biopharmaceutical Science, Professor Catalin Carico. 唐奖第五届生技医药奖得奖人。德鲁·魏斯曼教授 ，2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Biopharmaceutical Science, Professor Drew Weissman。唐奖第五届生技医药奖得奖人，彼得·库里斯教授 ，2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Biopharmaceutical Science, Professor Peter Collis。唐奖第五届汉学奖得奖人。杰西卡·罗森教授 ，2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Sinology, Professor Jessica Rawson。唐奖第五届法治奖得奖人，雪柔·宋德斯教授 ，2022 Tang Prize Laureate in Rule of Law, Professor Cheryl Saunders。唐奖创办人夫人及董事王启凡女士。Wife of Tang Prize founder and Tang Prize board member, Ms. Wang Qifan. 以及唐奖教育基金会陈振川执行长 ，CEO of the Tang Prize Foundation, Dr. Chen Zhengquan. 欢迎所有贵宾，请就座。Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
各位现场的贵宾、线上的观众朋友们，欢迎莅临唐奖第五届颁奖典礼。唐奖的精神出自于盛唐之士，唐朝为东西方文明交汇、政治、经济以及科技发展的全盛时期，而兼容各文化的胸怀以及气度，正是唐奖所代表的精神。Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 Tang Prize Laureates Award Ceremony. In title and in spirit, the Tang Prize pays homage to the Chinese dynasty of the same name and celebrates that period's richness in culture, liberal atmosphere, and progress in technology and economic development. It was also during the Tang Dynasty that Eastern and Western cultures began an unprecedented exchange. 而唐奖面对当前文化的社会，以中华文化数千年的涵养，从新思维以及新思考出发，推动实质的行动以及思考，希望呢能够在全球化的快速进步以及发展之时，在人类享受文明的丰厚果实以及便利带来的科技之时，希望我们同时也面对了各式不同的挑战。以及考验，像是气候变迁，以及贫富差距，以及社会道德的视为等等。In the advent of industrialization and globalization, humanity has enjoyed the convenience brought about by science and technology. Yet humanity also faces a multitude of critical challenges, including environmental, social, cultural, and ethical issues on an unparalleled scale. Including climate change, inequality, and also moral degradation. 而为了鼓励世人重新醒思、永续发展的中庸之道，尹仁良博士于二零一二年正式成立唐奖，设置了永续发展、生计医药、汉学以及法治四大奖项，不分种族、不分国籍、不分性别，遴选出对于全世界。有创新、实质贡献以及影响力的成就者。Against this backdrop, Dr. Samuel Yin established the Tang Prize in 2012 to encourage individuals across the globe to chart the middle path to achieving sustainable development by recognizing and supporting contributors for their revolutionary efforts in the four major fields of sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science. Sinology and rule of law. The Tang Prize is global in reach, with laureates selected on the basis of the originality of their work, along with their contribution to the society, irrespective of their ethnicity, gender, or nationality. 那么今天真的非常的开心哦，也倍感荣幸，和唐奖第五届所有得奖人共聚一堂。希望借由今天的颁奖典礼，让所有得奖人的卓越贡献发扬光大。Today we are graced by the presence of the 2022 Tang Prize laureates, who are leaders and visionaries in their respective fields, as we gather here to celebrate their achievements and contribution. 接下来，首先有请唐奖教育基金会陈振川执行长。上台致开幕词。Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming CEO of the Tang Prize Foundation, Professor Chen Zhengchuan, to deliver the opening remarks. Wife of Tang Prize founder and Tang Prize board member Wang Qifan. The distinguished laureates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of Dr. Yin, founder of the Ten Prize and chairman of the Runtex Group, I welcome you all to the fifth Ten Prize Award ceremony. Last year, the Ten Prize celebrated its tenth anniversary and announced its 2022 recipients. This year, with the lifting of travel restrictions, the foundation has been able to reconnect with the international community. 
plan events in Taiwan and abroad, and organize a long overdue templates week. Therefore, it gives me great joy to see all the honored guests join us in person at this ceremony to show our sincere admiration for the 6th 2022 laureates. During past few years, we have all been tested by many serious issues. Issues such as climate change, emerging infection, infectious disease, growing inequality, geopolitical uh, tensions, and the energy problems remain intertwined and are becoming more complex. In particular, the world has been uh, battered by the COVID pandemic for nearly three years. In light of this crisis, we have come to recognize that overcoming obstacles and finding viable solutions in order to achieve sustainable development have become the most urgent tasks of our time. As the founder, Dr. In, regards the educational aspect of the 10 prize as its core value. The prize aims to recognize people who have influenced and made substantive contributions uh, to the world. Six to encourage every individual to realize their potential, engage in research and innovation, and foster a culture of knowledge sharing and collaboration and hopes to prepare the advancement of human civilization in harmony with the sustainable development of our planet. Sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science, sinology, rule of law, the four categories of the 10 price encompass natural and the social sciences. They were chosen to reflect the major challenge we face today. Throughout the years, our laureates have constantly acted on their conscious and drawn on their expertise to offer advice on how to solve the problems I just mentioned. They are helped further the cause of sustainable development by developing new drugs and technologies, preventing the spread of disease, improving public health, fascinating East-West interactions, and promoting human rights, justice, and peace on a global scale. For these remarkable contributions, they have my deepest appreciations. There is a well-known Chinese saying, Si Lian Su Mu, which means it takes a decade to grow a tree, but it takes a century to nurture a generation of young talent. The 10 year anniversary is an important milestone for the 10 prize. And in continual nurturing talent for the next 100 years, we need people with dedications and determinations to work with us in order to create a better world and a brighter future. Finally, I would like to thank Dr. Chen Xin, President of Ten Price Selection Committee and all the committee members for their tireless efforts. Congratulations to all the 2022 laureates and I wish everyone happiness and good health. Thank you. Thank you. 唐奖教育基金会陈振川执行长，谢谢。Thank you, Dr. Chen. Please be seated. 唐奖评选委员呢，负责唐奖的提名以及评选等重要的作业。他们以原创性、影响力以及对于世界的贡献作为遴选标准。接下来，我们就要有请唐奖第五届评选总召集人、中央研究院。the Tang Prize nomination nomination and laureate selection is conducted by the Tang Prize Selection Committee, 
who base their decisions on candidates' originality, influence, and contribution to the greater society. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you President of the Tang Prize Selection Committee, Academician of Academia Sinica, Professor Qian Xu. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Dear esteemed Tang Prize laureates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Tang Prize was established by Dr. Samuel Yin in 2012 as an international award to recognize and encourage innovative research in sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science, sinology, and rule of law, with the aim of creating another golden era for, for humankind akin to that of the Tang Dynasty more than a millennium ago. It has gained worldwide recognition as a major international award. Today, we celebrate the selection of the 2022 Tang Prize laureates, Professor Jeffrey Sachs for Sustainable Development, Drs. Kathleen Carrico, Drew Weisman, and Pieter Cullis for Biopharmaceutical Science, Professor Cheryl Sanders for Rule of Law, and Professor Jessica Larson for Sinology. I wish to express my warmest congratulations to the laureates for their marvelous contributions in these four important fields. Your outstanding accomplishments in science, society, and humanity have greatly amplified the spirit of the Tang Prize to benefit humankind. Your superb contributions are especially valuable today as we face severe challenges in the sustainability of our earth and major issues in people's health, justice, and peace. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the selection committees chaired by Professors Zhao Han Liu, Wen Chang Zhang, David De Wei Wang, and Jun Rong Ye for their outstanding work in selecting the laureates and to the Tang Prize Foundation staff led by Dr. Jesse Chen for their excellent administrative support. Best wishes for a wonderful ceremony and happy, happiness and health to everyone. Thank you. Thank you once again to President Qian Xu. Thank we will now proceed to present the Tang Prize in Sustainable Development. The Tang Prize in Sustainable Development recognizes those who have made extraordinary contributions to the sustainable development of human societies, especially through groundbreaking innovations in science and technology. The 2022 Tang Prize in Sustainable Development is awarded to Jeffrey D. Sachs. Ladies and gentlemen, now a video about the Tang Prize Laureate in Sustainable Development. The rich countries just borrowed $17 trillion for COVID. The poor countries, nothing. As a world-renowned economist, Professor Jeffrey Sachs is well known for speaking up for the poor. His pursuit of justice began with his upbringing. His father was an attorney who fought for labor rights and taught him important moral values. Growing up a close family, and it was natural uh, that 
issues of social justice and personal decency uh, should be a, a big part of our lives. To understand how to create a better society, Professor Sachs chose to study economics. His work in solving Bolivia's hyperinflation crisis brought him to great fame. He then became interested in the relationship between the economy and the environment. The UN recognized his abilities and invited him to serve as a special advisor to then Secretary General Kofi Annan. He helped launch the Global Fund and then became the director of the UN Millennium Project in 2002. How do you address such a complex mix of disease, uh, food productivity, nutrition, poverty, children in school or not in school, seeing the interconnected challenges and the interconnected world. And that for me became sustainable development. Under Professor Sachs' leadership, the Millennium Development Goals lifted more than one billion people out of extreme poverty. What followed were the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. To help achieve these goals, Professor Sachs set up the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, or SDSN. And the SDSN is Jeff's brainchild, which is how, how can we bring together experts from different disciplines and to provide simple and clear direction on issues of sustainable development. Professor Sachs was a key figure in the Paris Agreement negotiations. His advocacy for deep decarbonization resulted in all signatories agreeing to adopt long-term plans. He doesn't say things until and unless he's done his homework. He makes sure that when he opens his mouth, it's evidence-based and defensible and um, you know, and as correct as the science or whatever um, would um, assure. The pandemic and the war in Ukraine may have hindered sustainable development, but Professor Sachs remains hopeful. For him, the SDGs are a way to realize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and to create a sustainable future. We need fighters like Professor Sachs. Congratulations to Professor Sachs, and introducing the Tang Prize in Sustainable Development is Academician of Academia Seneca, Liu Zhaohan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Liu to the stage. Professor Sachs is awarded the 2022 Time Prize in Sustainable Development for leading transdisciplinary sustainability science and creating the multilateral movement for its applications from village to nation to the world. Professor Sachs is a university professor at Columbia University and director of the Center for Sustainable Development there. He taught at Harvard for, for more than 20 years before he joined Columbia as the director of the Earth Institute in 2002. Professor Sachs is also the president of the UN Sustainable Development Solution Network, SDSN, established in 2012 under the auspices of the then UN Secretary General, Ben Ki-moon. Professor Sachs is a world-renowned economist who has conducted 
groundbreaking research in many areas, including debt crisis, hyperinflation, eradication of extreme poverty, and battle against human-induced climate change. On behalf of the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, Professor Sachs helped in uh, from 2002 and 2006, he chaired the UN Millennium Project to develop, to develop and implement concrete action plans to achieve the eight Millennium Development Goals. Professor Sachs demonstrated how the MDGs could be achieved by using best practices in science, technology, and public policies. In the span of 10 years, the project has helped to alleviate hundreds of millions of people in the world from extreme poverty. With this, with this experience in implementing the MDGs, Professor Sachs helped to develop and promote sustainable development goals from their very inception. Professor Sachs led the UNSDSN, which is a global consortium of universities and think tanks to help countries to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The SDSN has now more than 1,800 institutions in 53 networks across 146 countries in the world. Professor Sachs' role in promoting the Paris Agreement has been similarly impressive. During the intensive phase of negotiations, he worked behind the scenes with many governments to support the design and adoption of the agreement. The SDGs and the Paris Agreement have been held as the two essential pillars for the world to achieve sustainable development. It is significant to note that Professor Sachs played a unique role in both. Professor Sachs has combined the fields of global economics, public health, equity, and sustainability into an integrated field of study and practice. Many of us believe that our modern thinking and, and approach to sustainable development would not have reached the current level of integrated framing nor widespread understanding without the extraordinary contributions by Professor Sachs. Thank you and congratulations, Professor Sachs. 谢谢院士刘步颁奖，让我们掌声欢迎永续发展奖得奖人杰佛瑞·萨克斯教授上台领奖。Thank you, Professor Liu, Professor Jeffrey D. Sachs. May I now ask you to come to the stage to receive the prize from the hands of Professor Liu? Professor Liu, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Jeffrey D. Sachs.
接着有请院士颁发唐奖得奖证书。Professor Liu, please now present the Tang Prize Diploma. 有请院士以及得奖人一同合影。We now like to invite the award presenter and the laureate for a photograph. 谢谢院士颁奖，请您回座。Thank you, Professor Liu. Please be seated. 有请唐奖第五届永续发展奖得奖人杰弗瑞·萨克斯教授致辞。And now we would like to invite Professor Jeffrey D. Sachs to deliver his remarks. 主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持人，主持
economic productivity, but a productivity based on technologies that were not designed for environmental sustainability. And the third is that with all our interconnectedness and all our knowledge and all our history and all our experience and all our technology, we are still fighting with each other, but now with weapons that are more dangerous than ever. And so sustainable development seeks to address these three challenges. The challenges of ending extreme poverty, the challenge of addressing the uh, ways to change technology to make our economic well-being consistent with environmental sustainability and to have peace and cooperation on the planet. Sustainable Development Goal 16 is for peace. Sustainable Development Goal 17 is for global cooperation. So the fact that the Tang Prize has taken this remarkable approach linking uh, ancient knowledge, wisdom, and this wonderful period with our modern challenges and addressing the span of disciplines as we have today is such wisdom and I must say how grateful I am for the existence of this prize and what it means as an offer to the world. Let me just conclude by saying what a personal thrill it is for me to be part of this year's laureate group and also to stand among the laureates specifically of sustainable development. And if I may just briefly say that the first laureate in sustainable development of the Tang Prize was Dr. Gru Brundtland. She's a wonderful leader of the world. She brought the concept to our attention. She hired me for two years. Uh, in uh, not hired me, but I worked for her in two years in the year 2000, 2001, when she was Director General of the World Health Organization, and I led a commission on her, her behalf. Uh, I did not know or don't know uh, Dr. Arthur Rosenfeld personally, but he led the idea of energy transformation, and this is what we need urgently right now. The 2018 laureates are two very close friends of mine, I'm proud to say, but also uh, my climate gurus, uh, uh, Ramanathan uh, and uh, James Hansen, who is my colleague at Columbia University. And they have helped us to understand the basic dynamics of the Earth systems. And the 2020 laureate, Jane Goodall, taught us, I think, more than just about any other person on the planet what it means to be human and to be part of a natural world with our closest relatives, with the, the chimpanzees and the other great apes and the ecology uh, as well that supports their lives and our lives. Thank you so much for this profound honor and thank you for the Tang Prize Foundation and all that you do to make the world a better place. That's a lot that you do. Thank you so much. 再次掌声恭喜，唐奖第五届永续发展奖得奖人杰佛瑞·萨克斯教授。Thank you and congratulations to Professor Jeffrey Sachs. Please be seated. 接下来我们继续颁发唐奖第五届生技医药奖。生技医药奖表扬具有原创性的生物医学以及药物研发之科学研究，对于重要疾病的预防、诊断。以及治疗有重大的影响，以生技医药解决人类疾病的问题，增进健康。The Tang Prize in Biopharmaceutical Science recognizes original biopharmaceutical or biomedical research that has led to significant advances towards preventing, diagnosing, and/or treating major human diseases to improve human health. 恭喜卡塔琳·卡里克教授、德鲁·韦斯曼教授以及彼得·库里斯教授荣获唐奖第五届生技医药奖。接下来有请各位贵宾一同观赏得奖人介绍影片。The 2022 Tang Prize in Biopharmaceutical Science is awarded to Catalin Carico, 
Drew Weissman, and Peter Cullis. Ladies and gentlemen, now a video about the Tang Prize laureates in biopharmaceutical science. In November 2019, a public health crisis struck the world. COVID-19 was spreading like wildfire across the globe. Amid great uncertainties, a lifeline emerged. The first mRNA vaccine for humans was developed in less than a year. It arrested the advance of the pandemic, and a group of dedicated scientists made this miracle possible. One notable person was Dr. Catalin Carrico. Without her, mRNA vaccines would not have been used so quickly. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. It tells cells what their tasks are, such as making proteins. Dr. Carrico and UPenn immunologist Dr. Drew Weissman developed an mRNA that can escape immune surveillance and trigger immune responses. So the body learns how to fight the virus without being exposed to it. However, this revolutionary breakthrough initially received little attention. People had been burned by RNA. It was very, RNA is very difficult to work with. He was the one, he said, listen, you know, the telephone will ring. And of course, uh, nobody called, not 2005, not 2008. Born in Hungary, Dr. Carrico later moved to America. Though she devoted her life to studying mRNA, her lab was forced to close. She was then demoted. During this trying period, she met Dr. Weissman by a photocopier, and their lives were changed. And I introduced myself. I, you know, I like to brag and told him that I am working with RNA. When we started working together, it was Katie and I working at a bench like this, side by side. It was just the two of us. They kept working shoulder to shoulder for more than 20 years. These efforts expedited the arrival of the COVID mRNA vaccines. But one more key player found a way to allow mRNA to enter human cells and deliver its instructions. Dr. Peter Cullis is a pioneer of lipid nanoparticles, which can encapsulate mRNAs that encode specific viral protein and deliver them into certain cells. When the clinical trial results were released, he was rather shocked. I was amazed. Uh, you know, I was hoping that it was going to work. I mean, maybe 70 percent, you know, 95 percent. I, mean, I don't think anybody could quite um, could quite imagine that happening. So, it was that was that was incredible. For people that thought lipids were not that important, well, I think we've shown them wrong. So, <laughs> these three scientists not only saved millions of lives but also ushered in an era of mRNA LMP therapies, and more medical wonders are yet to come. Congratulations! Congratulations to the three laureates. And introducing the Tang Prize laureates in biopharmaceutical science is academician of Academia Sinica, Professor Zhang Wenchang. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Zhang to the stage. Welcome, everyone. In the year of 2020, the successful development of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines by several distinguished scientists with record speed is surprising. It took less than one year, and the vaccines have already saved millions of lives. The Tom Price Foundation has honored three of them, Drs. Kathleen Carrico, Drew Weissman, and Peter Curries, as recipients of the 2022 Tom Price in Biopharmaceutical Science. They are credited 
for the discovery of key vaccine technology concepts and approaches leading to the successful development of mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccine. Today, I am honored to introduce them to you. The first laureate, Dr. Kathleen Carrico, is Senior Vice President of BNT. She is also professor at University of Sige, Hungary, and adjunct professor at University of Pennsylvania. For four decades, her research has been focusing on RNA-mediated mechanism with the ultimate goal of developing in vitro transcribed mRNA for protein therapy. She was educated in Hungary and moved to the U.S. in 1985 to pursue her interest in RNA-based vaccines and therapies. More speci specifically, she was interested in RNA chemical synthesis for efficient protein expression in cells, in vitro, and in vivo. At UPenn, she and Dr. Weissman together discovered that nucleoside modifications suppress immunogenicity of RNA. This groundbreaking work unlocked the opportunity for the therapeutic use of mRNA. Clearly, her pioneering work is critical for the rapid development of BNT and Moderna vaccines. The second laureate, Dr. Drew Weissman, is the Roberts Family Professor in Vaccine Research at the University of Pennsylvania, where he started his laboratory in 1997. He received his MD, PhD degree from Boston University. As a brilliant physician scientist, he dedicated his research efforts in developing vaccine against HIV. Prior to joining UPenn, he worked at NIH in the group of Dr. Anthony Fauci on HIV-related research. At UPenn, in collaboration with Dr. Carrico, he started studying RNA as a vaccine. Dr. Weissman and Dr. Carrico first collaborated on the studies of mRNA transfection of dendritic cells which induce inflammatory responses. Then they published the pivotal discovery that nucleoside modified NIRNAs are immunogenic, are non-immunogenic. Dr. Weissman has been actively engaged in the application of this technology to the development of RNA vaccine against infection by virus, such as HIV and Zika virus. His immunological insights are pivotal to the successful development of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. The third laureate, Dr. Peter Kuris, is a pioneer in the development of DP nanoparticles and a professor at the University of British Columbia. He received his PhD in physics from UBC. He is a leader in the studies of membrane structure and function at the molecular level for the development of effective drugs. His lab showed that cationic lipids used for transfection can induce non deep barrier structures that can facilitate intracellular delivery of DNA and RNA molecules. This led to the development of the nanoparticle, so-called LMP system, 
which is critical for the development of RNA-based vaccine. As RNA is quite unstable and difficult to be efficiently delivered into the cells. It is clear that without a delivery system developed by Dr. Kuris, the mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccine would not have such a huge impact on human health. On behalf of the Tom Price Selection Committee for Biopharmaceutical Science, I would like to invite everyone here to express a sincere appreciation to these three remarkable scientists for their breakthrough accomplishment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Zhang. Please remain on stage to present the award. Professor Kathleen Kiriko, Professor Drew Weissman, and Professor Peter Cullis, may I now ask you to come to the stage to receive the prize from the hands of Professor Zhang. Professor Zhang, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Kathleen Carrico. And now please present the Tang Prize Diploma. Professor Zhang, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Drew Weissman. And now please present the Tang Prize Diploma. And now Professor Zhang, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Peter Kolis. 接下来有请院士颁发得奖证书。And now please present the Tang Prize Diploma. 接下来有请卡里科教授以及德鲁曼教授一同合影。We now like to invite the award of the laureate to come forward for a group photo with the award presenter. Thank you. Professor Kariko, please remain on stage. Professor Zhang, Professor Weissman, and Professor Kolis, please have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow laureate. I am deeply honored here, together with my colleague Drew Weissman and Peter Kulis, to accept the Tong Prize. It is a great privilege for us to belong to the most outstanding group of scientists who received this award in the past. This award puts a spotlight on the importance of scientific research, technological advancement, as well as international collaboration. All of these were undoubtedly crucial for the development of COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. It is important to note that these vaccines were developed based on 
century of scientific and technological advancement made by hundreds and thousands of scientists, doctors, engineers, and experts. This award also recognizes discoveries by our fellow scientists who worked diligently over decades to help build the foundation of our work. We did not invent mRNA. Nature invented it. It is the molecule that carries the information from the DNA to the protein synthesis factory, instructing what protein to be made. Messenger RNA was discovered in 1961. It took 60 years to develop into an approved medical product in the, first, in the form of first COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. So what happened during these 60 years? Due to the hard work of fellow scientists, the mRNA coding for any desired protein could be produced in the tube, could be formulated in order to deliver to the cells where the mRNA translated into protein. However, for years, the inflammatory nature of the RNA, it hampered its medical use. Working, as the sh film showed, shoulder to shoulder with my fellow awardee, Drew Weissman, we identified one building block in the mRNA which was responsible for this, uh, triggering this immune reaction. We successfully eliminated this response, improved translation of the mRNA, and our pioneering work fueled a number of advances, has opened the door for future therapeutics. But how did I get here? Where did I come from? I have not been in the spotlight in my life, my life was not like that. For four decades, I worked quietly, diligently in the laboratory, designed experiments, performed, and I knew that what I was doing is important and didn't wait for anybody to tap my shoulder, praising for my work. The only award ceremonies I attended when my daughter, Susan Francia, won gold medals in rowing in the U.S. Women's Age in the Olympic Games here in China, in Beijing, and London. Now today, receiving the Tang Prize, I have been able to reflect my humble beginning, the long, winding road on which I arrived here. I grew up in Hungary, a small town with a population of 10,000 people. My mother was bookkeeper, my father was butcher, and I learned from them that hard work is part of life and how to make sausage. How did I get from this simple life of single room with no running water, standing here on the stage, receiving the tongue prize? It certainly was not my intention. I was just a curious girl who watched with fascination those plants in our garden, the animals, and I wanted to learn more about the internal mechanism of living things. I didn't know a single scientist, but I knew I wanted to be one. In high school, my teacher handed me a book called Stress of Life, in which Hans Schreyer wrote, adopting the right attitude can convert the negative stress into positive one. This book was my guide through the years, as I continued my journey becoming a scientist, I remember Shaya words when I experienced failures as a student or in the lab. So I adopted the right attitude, searched for better ways to improve myself, work harder, be more creative, and perform better. I always try to focus on things that I could change and didn't waste time on things that I couldn't change. Why I am accepting the Tang Prize, I think about all of the young girls who, like me, in their age, are curious about nature. I would like to encourage them to remain curious, believe in themselves, become a scientist, 
and make a better world around us. Thank you. 再次恭喜卡塔琳·卡里科教授。Thank you and congratulations to Professor Carico. Please be seated. 接下来有请唐奖第五届生技医药奖第二位得奖人。德鲁·魏斯曼教授上台致辞。And now we would like to invite Professor Drew Weissman to the stage to deliver his remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and esteemed members of the Tang Prize Committee, I am deeply humbled and profoundly grateful to be the recipient of the prestigious Tang Prize. I am honored to receive this award in recognition, along with Katie and Peter, and also with the winners in the fields of Chinese culture and its contribution to the development of human civilization. Due process and substantive justice, and sustainable development. I would also like to thank my wife for being here and making all of my work possible and enjoyable. First and foremost, I must acknowledge the unwavering support and encouragement from my mentors, colleagues, and the scientific community as a whole. Science is an endeavor that thrives on collaboration. And I am fortunate to have worked alongside brilliant minds who share a passion for advancing medical research and improving human health. Their invaluable insights and inspiration have been instrumental in shaping my scientific journal. The development of mRNA technology has been an incredible journey, marked by countless hours of dedication, perseverance, and the pursuit of scientific excellence. The Tang Prize not only recognizes the progress we have made thus far, but also underscores the immense potential of mRNA LNPs in transforming the landscape of medicine. As an academic researcher, this award also allows me to pursue other avenues and interests that are important to me, particularly mRNA LNP therapeutic and vaccine worldwide equity. This award allows me to reach out to lower-income countries and regions to help them develop their own RNA research infrastructure, followed by the building of GMP production centers that allow local development and production for human use. Thus far, this has been completed in 18 locations, including Bangkok, Johannesburg, Pune, the Ukraine. And Brazil, and we are starting discussions with Uruguay and other sites around the world. Building this local infrastructure will allow the production of vaccines and treatments for diseases that affect the local populations. I believe this is an important manner to help address the unequal access to new medicines and vaccines, and allow the development of treatments needed in certain locations. By having local excellent scientists with knowledge of the diseases that affect their regions, and giving them access to mRNA LNP lipid nanoparticle technology, and the ability to manufacture locally, will allow the rapid development through clinical trials and local production and distribution to important regions of the world. In my view, I'm not receiving this award for myself. But for the thousands of researchers that have performed the studies and the work that allowed us to develop modified RNA and mRNA LNP vaccines, these researchers identified the potential of mRNA and lipid nanoparticles. And while their attempts didn't develop into vaccines and therapeutics, they did spur on continued research. It served as an impetus for spurred continued investigation. In the use of mRNA, most importantly, I am receiving this award for the researchers that are currently advancing this technology for new vaccines, therapeutics, 
and genetic therapies throughout the world. And for the young researchers that will take these technologies and develop unbelievably new drugs in the future. In conclusion, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the Tang Foundation for this tremendous honor. I am immensely grateful for the recognition of our work and the work of countless scientists who've contributed to the development of mRNA technology. This award serves as a powerful reminder of the impact that scientific innovation can have on human lives. Let us seize this moment to rededicate ourselves to the pursuit of knowledge, the advancement of science, and for the benefit of the world. Together, let us continue to push the boundaries of what is possible. Let the spirit of ex exploration and discovery guide us towards a future where mRNA LNP therapeutics offer hope and healing to all. Thank you. 再次恭喜德魯·維斯曼教授. Thank you and congratulations to Professor Weisman. Please be seated. 接下來我們要邀請唐獎第五屆生技醫藥獎第三位得獎人 彼得庫里斯教授上台致辭 And now we would like to invite Professor Peter Collis to the stage to deliver his remarks. 我要感谢唐founding的这个第三位得奖人彼得库里斯教授上台致辞。我要感谢唐founding的这个第三位得奖人彼得库里斯教授上台致辞。我要感谢唐founding的这个第三位得奖人彼得库里斯教授上台致
And uh, that was uh, probably the high, what I thought was going to be the high point of my career when that drug got approved in 20, 2018. Uh, but uh, in the, in the mid, in, uh, after the drug went into clinical trials, it was around 2012 or 2013, we decided, okay, well, instead of delivering these small, uh, small interfering RNA, uh, which is a much smaller molecule than messenger RNA, let's try and deliver messenger RNA. And uh, that started to work as well, that we found that we could uh, package up the messenger RNA in our lipid nanoparticles, and the liver would make uh, the uh, protein that uh, the, that messenger RNA was coding for. So that was progressing well, but in, in uh, 2014, we were contacted by, and this is where the nonlinear part of science is really quite amazing. And we were contacted by Drew Weissman um, to see if our lipid nanoparticles would work to enable vaccines. In other words, with messenger RNA, it wouldn't be coding for a protein that would, say, be a, a therapeutic. It'd be coding for a protein that was part of a virus, and we get a vaccine response. And that worked incredibly well, um, which produced a vaccine to prevent uh, Zika virus, for example. And it led to a collaboration uh, with a company in Germany called BioNTech uh, that, uh, <coughs> that was concerned with making a flu vaccine. And so, okay, all of a sudden we were working with flu vaccines. Well, then this was about 2018 or 2019. Uh, the, uh, when, the, when the pandemic hit in 2020, of course, all efforts switched. Uh, to say, let's make a vaccine uh, for COVID-19. And so the lipid nanoparticle that we've been developing for one purpose or another, it might be Zika virus, it might be the uh, influenza virus, now ended up being, being part of the uh, Pfizer-BioNTech uh, mRNA vaccine. And the rest, of course, of that is history. Uh, but it's, I just, as I say, I just want to point out how, how this, uh, this path to the, uh, to the vaccine was, uh, was not one that you could say, okay, I'm going to go in a straight line here and do this. And this. The science does not work that way. So the, uh, as I say, I accept the Tang Prize with great humility. Uh, the, um, the lipid, as, I, as I've indicated, these, these particles, these lipid nanoparticles uh, that we worked on reflect over 50 years of work many collabor collaborators and a good deal of luck. And if we hadn't been doing basic research on the roles of lipids and membranes, uh, we wouldn't have developed any nanomedicines. So basic research has been absolutely fundamental uh, to what we've done. Uh, the, um, if, if, uh, if four postdocs and I had not, uh, had not started companies to try and develop improved cancer drugs, uh, we, would not have, uh, we would not have started on the gene therapies. If Drew Weissman hadn't uh, con convinced us to try our systems as vaccines, we wouldn't have played a role in the COVID-19 vaccines. And if uh, we hadn't had hundreds of people working with us uh, over the years, we wouldn't have achieved any of this. And of course, if the beautiful Nancy Flight had not agreed to marry me 42 years ago, uh, it wouldn't have been so much fun either. So uh, thank you very much for this award. Uh, it uh, truly reflects, it really reflects the, the efforts of so many people. And um, I I'm very pleased to accept it on their behalf. Thank you. 再次恭喜彼得·库里斯教授 Thank you and congratulations to Professor Kulis. Please be seated. 好的,在颁发完永续发展奖以及生计医药奖两个奖项之后呢,接下来是我们颁奖典礼的中场表演的时间。为大家邀请到的是建山国小达马呼儿童合唱团带来天籁美声。and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the great pleasure of presenting to you the Jianshan Primary School Choir, who will be performing for us. Jianshan Guoxiao Damahu Ertong He Chang Tuan Ne Shi Lai Zi Yu Gao Xiong Shi Tao Yuan Chu. From 2018, Ne Qi Ne Jiu Yu Chen Jun Zhi Yi Shi Dan Yuan Zhi Dao Lao Shi. Tuan Yuan Da Gai Er Shi Ren Zuo Yu O Dou Shi Si Nian Ji Dao Liu Nian Ji Fei Chang Yu Cai Hua Yu Tian Fen De Xiao Peng Yu. 他们的曲目非常的多元，包括了有布农族、台湾族、阿美族、台语以及英语等各种不同的歌曲哦。那我们希望借由合唱团的成立呢，撒下一点点音乐的种子，在土地成长茁壮，带领孩子们开拓更
The Jianshan Primary School is located in the Taoyuan District in the southern city of Kaohsiung. In 2018, Dr. Chen Junzhi took over the club as the choir's director. This choir consists of about 20 students, ages 8 to 12. Their repertoire is quite diverse, encompassing more than just Bu Nong folk songs. The members also learn songs of other indigenous communities, such as the Paiwan and the Ame tribe. They also sing English and also Taiwanese songs. Behind the establishment of this choir is that the seeds of passion for music will be sown. As the seeds grow day by day, we hope that a window to the wider world will open for these young talent. 欢迎建山国小打马虎儿童合唱团 And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Jianshan Primary School Choir.
再次谢谢建山国小打马虎儿童合唱团呢、哦，带来非常精彩的组曲演出。我们看到呢，他们在表演的时候，可以看到现场不论种族、不论国籍、不论性别，大家呢都是发自内心的发出最深层的微笑哦，可见大家有多么享受这一次的演出。Thank you once again to the young performers from Jianshan Elementary School Choir, and not only their performance brought a smile to our faces, the smiles on your face also made us smile as well. So thank you once again to Jianshan Elementary School Choir. 没错，那接下来呢，我们继续颁奖。接着要颁发的是唐奖第五届汉学奖。唐奖汉学奖表扬的是。广义之汉学包括了研究中国以及相关学术，如思想、历史、文字、语言、考古、哲学、宗教、经学、文学以及艺术等各种不同的领域。唐奖汉学奖表扬汉学领域的卓越成就，彰显中华文化对于人类文明的贡献。The Tang Prize in Sinology recognizes the study of Sinology in its broadest sense, awarding research on China and its related fields, such as Chinese thought, history, philology, linguistics, archaeology, philosophy, religion, traditional canons, literature, and art. Honoring innovations in this field of Sinology. The prize showcases Chinese culture and its contributions to the development of human civilization. 恭喜杰西卡·罗森教授荣获唐奖第五届汉学奖。接下来有请各位贵宾一同观赏得奖人介绍影片。The 2022 Tang Prize in Sinology is awarded to Jessica Rawson. Ladies and gentlemen, now a video about the Tang Prize laureate in Sinology. Jessica Rawson, professor of Chinese art and archaeology at the University of Oxford, is the 2022 Tang Prize laureate in Sinology. Despite struggling with alphabetic languages as a child, her natural affinity for images led her to consider how objects convey meaning and have their own language. Objects are telling you what they're for. First of all, they're just telling you the function. But if you look a little harder and think a little more about it, you see, particularly at high table,、um, the knives and forks are in silver. In our lives, silver matters. Whereas in your lives in China, it will matter less because you use chopsticks. And so, if I start to compare China and the West, I can see they're two different languages. While sinologists have tended to focus on culture, history, philosophy, and literature, Professor Rawson has shed new light on the areas of art history, material culture, and the study of excavated artifacts. For her. Objects can tell stories without saying a word, but to decipher the language of objects, we need to observe and compare them. So, yes, you can certainly look at single objects, and that's what art historians do most of all. But I have moved away from the single object,、um, partly because I think you can overemphasize one bronze when actually the bronzes were all used in a ceremonial banquet for the ancestors. By examining nuanced changes in sets of bronzes, she developed a theory illustrating the ritual revolution in the Western Zhou era. She discovered that the quantity, shapes, and decorations of these wares contained important cultural insights. From here, she built a broad view of East-West interactions. Her recent research delves into how horse trading in ancient China is related to the origins of the Silk Road. Horses and herded animals with hooves cannot survive, cannot flourish in the south. The Chinese have to use the Mongolians to get horses, but the other side of it is, it's the source of the Silk Route, because they're bartering something for the horses. This Silk Road period, I became very interested in it, because I realised that this was one of part of China's international relations. 
how China developed its borders and its contacts with other people. Professor Rawson once served as the keeper of the British Museum's Department of Oriental Antiquities. In 1994, she became the first female warden of Oxford's Merton College. Experiences at the British Museum helped her bring a fresh perspective to the historic college and established the University of Oxford China Centre. Through her theoretical and practical work, Professor Rawson has deepened our understanding of Chinese civilization. Congratulations to Professor Jessica Rawson. Introducing the Tang Prize Laureate in Sinology is Academician of Academia Sinica, Edward C. Henderson, Professor of Chinese Literature at Harvard University, Professor David Derwei Wang. Distinguished laureates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the Tang Prize Committee in Sinology, we are overjoyed to present the achievements of a professor named Jessica Rousen in Sinology. And we appreciate and recognize her contribution to areas such as art history, archaeology, and particularly material culture. Over the years, um, Professor Rousen has also dedicated her scholarship and energy to furthering the relationship and the mutual understandings between the East and the West. She is a person who teaches us that China or Chinese culture is not only a unique entity in world phenomena, but also part of a constantly changing world configuration of cosmopolitanism on the one hand and antiquity on the other. Professor Rousen specializes in object studies through objects such as vessels, artworks, architectures, and many, many animate and inanimate things. Professor Rousen guides us into a world in which multiple races, civilizations, regions interacted with each other to be produced one after another cultural splendors through thousands of years of human history. Professor Rousen also has this amazing insight and meticulous sensibilities to understand even the most minute things under study. And through her work, she teaches us how things, even muted things, can actually have their own soundings and voices. How to let these muted things um, be heard, be listened to by all of us is one of the, her major tasks throughout her scholarship. Or in her own words, as opposed to the history of language, something we are all used to, Professor Rousen guides us to a different direction. That is, is a history of objects. In that history, we come to realize the richness and the complexities of human imagination and the creativity. For instance, Professor Rousen discovers those patterns of vines and the lotuses on ancient Chinese ceramics. And she came to the realization that those patterns may not be real plants in reality, but instead artistic creations, which probably can be derived from as far as Mediterranean or even other areas since civilizations and beyond. She discovers in the vessels of Ying and Zhou and the Shang dynasties in which the arrangement and the configurations of those ritual vessels it tells us a lot of, about the meaning systems in ancient China, both the nobles' life and the plebeian lives at large. She also tells us that the horses are not something we merely are used to in everyday life. Horses are creatures or animals which were being introduced to China through um, um, generations of cultural 
and animalistic exchanges from Mongolian plateau all the way to、uh, central China. And as a result, the existence and the use of horses help facilitate the build of the Silk Road. Professor Rausen also has taught us that、uh, paraphernalia, such as a golden belt, such as carnelian beads. Um, in ancient Zhou Dynasty, are not just merely objects for decoration or ornaments. Those things can actually be results of cultural exchange between Chinese and other cultures. And in recent months, Professor Rausen has just published her newest book, Life and Afterlife in Ancient China. She introduced twelve tombs in twelve regions. Throughout four thousand years of human history, and she discovered in these tombs、uh, um, numerous excavated objects, which tell us one story after another. In other words, through these objects, she helps enliven the world we have almost forgotten, and she has taught us numerous things we have yet to learn and appreciate. So today, on this very auspicious occasion, we pay our respect to Professor Rausen's、uh, lifelong dedication to Oriental studies on the one hand and the world cultural studies in general. And we learn so much from you, Professor Rausen, and we appreciate the, your contribution to our advancement of Chinese civilization throughout world human history. Thank you very much, Professor Rausen. Thank you. 谢谢院士，请院士留步颁奖。Thank you, Professor Wang. Please remain on stage. 接下来有请唐奖第五届汉学奖得奖人杰西卡·罗森教授上台领奖。Professor Jessica Rosen, may I now ask you to come to the stage to receive the prize from the hands of Professor Wang. Professor Wang, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Jessica Rosen. Now, please present the Tang Prize Diploma. We would now like to invite the award presenter and the laureate for a photograph. 谢谢院士，请回座。Thank you, Professor Wang. Please be seated. 接下来有请杰西卡·罗森教授。And now we would like to invite Professor Jessica Rosen to deliver her remarks. It is a tremendous honor to stand here in front of many friends, of course, but also many people I have never met before, including the laureates, to be、uh, awarded the Tang Prize. Of sinology is something so unexpected that I can hardly believe I'm here, but I accept it with gratitude, and I would like to thank both Professor Wang and the nominees and the selection committee, and above all the Tang Foundation, led by Dr. Samuel Yin, and organised now today by Dr. Chen. The Tang Foundation has also made many arrangements to bring us all here, and it is an important event. And I wish to thank everyone, all of you who have helped us today and the many days before our arrival. It is a strange and important moment for all of us who have missed the Chinese world for so long due to COVID. COVID has been resolved, perhaps in part, by my three colleague laureates, and that's wonderful. But For those of us who study the Far East and study China, we have been shut out of our lab, if you like, and to be back here 
is a quite amazing moment, and I'm so grateful for all the days we have already spent here and those that are still to come. China has always offered me an extraordinary society of great interest to explore, to open up my understanding not only of China, of the Chinese world speaking Chinese, but of the wider world. For China is a very important component. From my childhood, I was just fascinated by extraordinary silks and porcelains, which you see in a few grand houses or sometimes in a college. But actually, it was the British Museum, which you saw on the video, that drew me deeper into it. I have to say, both when I started to study Chinese, I kept on being told not to bother. China was far away. It was very difficult language. I wasn't any good at Latin. So why study China and Chinese? Well, every minute that I have dedicated to China has been a tremendous reward for me. And I'm also very, very grateful to the British Museum because it shows to all of us, not just China, of course, but many cultures in material form from around the world, everywhere. And we see not similarity, but diversity. And that is the thing that intrigued me most. Why was China so different? Why was their language written in a different kind of script? Why did they make such beautiful silks? Why silk anyway? What is silk? So the British Museum gave me the opportunity to see that we had to study something elsewhere. It was no good just staying and studying the Romanesque or the Gothic, which was suggested to me. No, I wanted to see China and to understand what China had given to the world. So I thank most of all for my initial if you like, education, the British Museum, where there was everything from Oceania to China to the Greeks. And I'm also very grateful um, that I was able to move on from the British Museum to Oxford, and there I have to thank a quite different group of people. Those of us who are Europeans or Americans, we cannot study China without the Chinese. We have to be allowed into what is a hidden land. There are many features of a hidden land. There are wonderful stories in Chinese about hidden lands. But without a guide, without engagement with Chinese scholars, I would never have seen China. And I have been immensely fortunate to travel, particularly over large areas of North China, through the lands of this Lois, through different mountains, through deserts, through the edge of Tibet, to the sea at Shandong, so that the huge size of China and its continent, continental scope and also the difference between the climates of the far north and the humidity of the south make one realize that this is some, a kaleidoscope of a world. It is not a single world. It's a land of many regions, of many dialects, of many foods, and of many different objects. So that I could not have visited it, I could not have studied it, without the help of many, many Chinese archaeologists and historians who took me to hidden parts of China, to China that most Europeans or Westerners can never reach, to workstations of archaeologists, to the great trenches and great tombs which the Chinese dug. So it is for them that I also wish to thank and to remember them every day of my life, because without them, I would not have been able to do this work, and I would not able, be able to bring China to you, particularly to my European colleagues, to my European friends and my American friends. Living in Europe, it always seemed to me that we should learn about China. And I have been investigating every aspect I was allowed to see. But I'm especially grateful to the foundation that has offered research funds that enable other people to take this work forward. Because one person or a dozen people or hundreds of people are not enough. China is a huge country with many different aspects and it poses many questions for all of us, particularly in the far west.
And I'm very, very grateful that the research funds will enable colleagues, and a little contribution from me, but much more from my colleagues, to take forward this research. I think that this is part of Dr. Yin's vision and one of the most important parts, because I've finished, I've done a lot of work, but more is needed and more introduction of China's special characteristics are essential. I do know, for those of you who live in a Chinese world, here in Taiwan, China is part of your world. But for those of us who live in the West and who listen only to news, news reels and so on, China seems far away and it is very important that the cultures and peoples of other lands learn about China and recognize its enormous scope, its enormous history, and its many different characteristics, its formidable language, its amazing literature, and its long, long history. I, of course, look at the material culture, and I learn from that, particularly in details about its technical strength, its enormous manufacturing capacity from very early times. Those of you who have ever looked at the Terracotta Warriors will have seen one of the extraordinary production efforts of the Chinese 2,000 years ago. So one of the great achievements from my perspective of the Tang Foundation has been to stimulate and encourage interest in China through its history, literature, and material culture. Most of the world knows very little about that, and it is about time that they learnt a lot more. And I hope people don't tell others now that it's a waste of time to study Chinese. Um, I've been told that so many times, and it's really a wrong direction. I'm grateful, therefore, not only for the award, but for the work of the Foundation in bringing the histories and achievements of the Chinese world, the whole Chinese world, to a much wider public. And it is an honor to stand here today to talk to you about it, to think about it, and to hope you all will help me and the Tang Foundation in furthering this interest in China and recognizing its important contribution, not just in the Tang period, not in the earlier periods, but today it is a large, highly populated country, and it has an enormous role in the world, which we should all acknowledge and we should all effort, make an effort to understand. I thank, above all, the Tang Foundation and the Yin family, Dr. Chen, and I thank my fellow laureates. It's been a pleasure to listen to people who work in very different fields and to enjoy a very different part of the intellectual universe. Thank you. 再次恭喜杰西卡·罗森教授荣获唐奖第五届汉学奖 Thank you, and congratulations to Professor Jessica Rawson. Please be seated. 各位贵宾，最后我们要颁发的是唐奖第五届法治奖。唐奖法治奖基于人人生而平等的信念，相信个人、国家以及国际组织受到法律的规范。唐奖提倡。法律应该兼顾正当程序以及实体正义，为和平、人权以及永续发展而奋斗，追求人类以及自然的共同福祉。唐奖法治奖，表扬法治理念或实践有创新，对于法治实现有卓越贡献的个人以及机构。the Tang Prize in Rule of Law recognizes individuals or institutions who have made significant contributions to the rule of law, reflected not only in the achievement of the candidates in terms of the advancement of legal theory or practice, but also in the realization of the rule of law in contemporary societies through the influences or inspirations of the work of the candidates. 恭喜雪柔宋德斯教授荣获唐奖第五届法治奖。接下来有请各位贵宾一同观赏得奖人介绍影片。The 2022 Tang Prize in Rule of Law is awarded to Cheryl Saunders. Ladies and gentlemen, now a video about the Tang Prize laureate in Rule of Law.
This petite and amiable lady is a giant in comparative constitutional law. Professor Cheryl Saunders was born in Quetta, then part of British India, and now a district of Pakistan. The experience of living in Japan when she was a child has affected how she sees the world. Circumstances of my sort of birth and early childhood have absolutely shaped the attitudes I've had to the world, I think. Curious about the world, interested in the world, wanting to engage in the world. Her interest in history and politics led her early on to the field of law, in particular public law. It set her on a path to study comparative constitutional law. Uh, it's important simply in the first place so that we can understand each other. Uh, you know, Australia has a number of close neighbours. Uh, those neighbours have very different systems of government, very different constitutional histories. Uh, comparative constitutional law is one window uh, into mutual understanding. In 1988, she established the Center for Comparative Constitutional Studies at Melbourne Law School. She's also the first woman to be appointed a full professor at Melbourne Law School, and one of the few people who has carved out a place for the Asia-Pacific region in the study of comparative constitutional law. So I now actually take the view that the Asia-Pacific region is probably the most interesting region in the world from a constitutional perspective. Professor Saunders' work is unique in that she encourages an inclusive approach to comparative constitutional law and integrates experiences from different parts of the world. I think that uh, in order to make generalizations about the world in which we live, we need to take a wide range of countries uh, into account, but that certainly complicates our comparative method. To promote global discussion on constitutional issues, Professor Saunders founded the Constitution Transformation Network and regularly hosts the Melbourne Forum. Due to her involvement in constitution building, at home and abroad, she's traveled widely in the Asia-Pacific region. Through theoretical discussion, she's made a substantive contribution to the building and reform of constitutions. In this regard, she's truly an academic practitioner. This is very, very unusual to get all these dimensions in the one person. As our world's divides seem to widen daily, Professor Saunders has used comparative constitutional law as a bridge to help increase mutual understanding on a global scale. Congratulations to Professor Cheryl Saunders. And now introducing the Tang Prize Laureate in Rule of Law is Chair Professor, National Taiwan University, Ye Junrong. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Ye to the stage. I have the pleasure to introduce to you Professor Shaw Saunders. For a 2022 Tang Prize Laureate in the Rule of Law. Professor Saunders has impressed us with her tremendous contribution in academic exploration and also practice. He has widened the concept and the realm of competitive constitutional law, but at the same time, put herself in the region and beyond, dealing with very complex constitutional engineering that happened in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in many places, of course, including Taiwan. He has been a renowned professor at Melbourne Law School, a very respected one, doing very well academically. She could just stay in the office, publish papers, enjoy the glory of 
a laureate professor in Australia. But no, she chose to do otherwise. She is a trailblazer. In the very beginning, when people are not quite recognize the function of constitutionalism, particularly when we need to deal with conflicts in the society or with other regime. Constitutional enterprise or engineering may come to help to save lives, prevent bloodshed, to form a foundation for our economic development, our democracy, and for our mankind. She recognized the importance of that and go beyond Australia. Her footprint has been in many places. I myself had some crossover with her, like in Nepal. We were facing tremendous challenges in a tiny country sandwiched by China and India with very complicated internal conflicts. But at the same time, they need to build up constitutional foundation in order to move on. Shaw Saunders participated from the very beginning of that enterprise. At some point, he also brought scholars from the region to Kathmandu, talking about issues that people in different regions are confronting. So the enterprise began to develop, but often confront backlash, up and down, up and down. Professor Saunders exercised her patience and her appreciation to the people and to the vested interest over there by putting them together to talk, by bringing scholars from the region, including myself, to take part in the process. Try to that the scholar, constitutional scholar in the region, care about themselves, but at the same time, care about others. After all, this is a region that our interests are intertwined. Professor Saunders exercised her leadership in this effort, not only by academic excellence, but by persuasion, but by building up networks. I would say, from someone you know, undergone democratic transformation in Taiwan, I observe that Professor Saunders take others' problem as her own problem. Take constitution as a mechanism which is critical to peace, to life saving, to prosperity, and to well being of the mankind. I can't explain every moment or every piece of the effort that Professor Saunders has been pushing forward to. But her role as a constitutional scholar and a constitutional practitioner deserve the recognition from Tam Price because Tam Price also recognize the importance of human welfare. 
peace, prosperity, and most importantly that I'm going to emphasize, justice. We have many ways to make progress in our society. From science and technological front, from economic front, from social front, from international front. But at least we build up a system which is sustainable in the future, and that is going to regulate the interest groups in our society, and also try to protect ourselves from other intervention. Otherwise, our society are not going to move on to what we believe as a sustainable society. What Professor Shaw Saunders has told us is to value that kind of system, not short-term gain. And this you have a constitutional foundation that is sustain sustainable. That can bring people together. That people talk about their differences in a time of peace or in the time of conflict. That's what Professor Saunders has done beyond academic excellence. I want to mention the other point which make my introduction to Professor Saunders maybe even more revealing. That is, all the effort done are in situations which has been very challenging. When it comes to constitutional making, constitutional revision, it's not a simple effort of adding one clause of human right into the constitutional text. There were conflicts. Maybe doing constitutional revision against the conflicts. Maybe post-conflict resolution. Maybe you need to prevent a possible war while doing constitutional revision or constitutional building. Constitutional building is such an effort that everybody knows it's important, but everybody, particularly political party, political forces, they want to gain as much as possible particular short-term gain as possible from that process. As a foreign advisor to those constitutional making, Professor Saunders need to show the dignity, of course academic dignity, but at the same time need to be very patient. Patient in talking and bringing people together while honoring pluralistic values human dignity, and general principles of constitutional law. I had witnessed in very occasions that she stood firm and strong while facing generals, political parties. They, are so, they were so eager to gain as much as possible from the process. We had the pleasure of working with Professor Saunders, Professor Saunders was invited to uh, law school uh, by uh, our uh, president of the Judicial Yuan, uh, Wong Yue Sheng, who also present here uh, as a Wong Yue Sheng lecturer uh, several years back. And we have learned a lot from her, uh, not only today, but it's been quite a while that the legal community, particular constitutional community, including myself, has been working with Professor Saunders for such a long time. Professor Saunders, thank you. Thank you for your contribution, not only, not only to Australia. I know you are very popular in Australia, 
but also to the region, particularly when, when Asia was not rising in that time, you know, like what we know today, you emphasize the importance of Asia Pacific. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ye. Please remain on stage. Professor Cheryl Saunders, may I now ask you to step up to the stage to receive the award from the hands of Professor Ye. Professor Ye, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Saunders. And now, please present the Tang Prize Diploma. And now a photograph with the award presenter and the laureate. Thank you, Professor Ye. Please be seated. And now we would like to invite Professor Cheryl Saunders to deliver her remarks. Members of the uh, Yin family, uh, all those associated uh, with the Tang Prize uh, Foundation, uh, my fellow laureates uh, and uh, distinguished guests. I'm deeply honoured to have been awarded the Tang Prize for the Rule of Law 2022. I understand and appreciate uh, the marvellous vision of Dr Yin in establishing these prestigious awards. I also congratulate Dr. Yin and the Foundation on this 10th anniversary of the creation of the awards for all that's been achieved in consolidating the Tang Prize over its first decade uh, and recognizing such marvelous and important work across the world. And I thank Professor Ye for a very generous presentation uh, of my work. I know, or I know of, all the previous laureates in the rule of law and I greatly admire them. It's humbling to be in their company. The contributions to law that each of them has made are extraordinary, and the diversity of their work speaks to the breadth and relevance of the rule of law as conceived by the Foundation. Justice L.B. Sachs fought for the end of the apartheid regime in South Africa, and once that was achieved, held a position on its inaugural constitutional court. Justice Louise Arbour was the chief prosecutor for the International Criminal Tribunal at a critical developmental stage for international criminal procedure. The late Professor Joseph Raz was one of the leading legal and polit political philosophers of our time, whose work on the rule of law has profoundly influenced thinking about it, including my own. And the three NGOs whose uh, who were awarded the 2020 prize, uh, employed the techniques of law creatively and with rigor in different parts of the world to protect vulnerable people and to advance the causes of justice in impressive practical applications of the rule of law. My own field in comparative constitutional law is different again. The field isn't new, but it experienced an explosion of new energy with the end of the Cold War, and it's developed rapidly over the decades since. It also has both theoretical and practical applications, including for the purposes of peace building, constitutional transition, and effective global collaboration on pressing common problems, of which climate change is obvious and urgent. 
My own interest over these decades has been to better understand what is required to conduct comparison on a global scale in order to realise its potential. My perspectives on the challenges of this project have been significantly shaped by the vast Asia-Pacific region in which most of us here today live. The complexity and diversity of constitutional arrangements across the Asia-Pacific and of the contexts in which they operate make the rest of the world look simple by comparison. And I'm particularly appreciative of the emphasis placed on my work in the region in the citation for the Tang Prize. Relevantly for today's ceremony, comparative constitutional law also offers insights into the rule of law in ways that can further its purposes. The rule of law famously is a term that's widely used but may denote very different things. Comparative constitutional law can identify and analyse variations that range from procedural to more substantive understandings linked to human dignity and rights. It can evaluate the significance of such differences in context. It can identify options for change where appropriate. And it can help to explain the lack of enthusiasm for the rule of law in societies where law is associated with exploitation and injustice. In these and other ways, comparative constitutional law has a role to play in making the rule of law both resilient and relevant. No comparative constitutional lawyer works in isolation. It's simply impossible. In my case, I've benefited enormously from interaction with other scholars bilaterally and in networks across the world. Everything I've done in the Asia-Pacific region has been in active collaboration with others, some of whom are here today. I've learned so much from them all, and importantly, I've learned how much there is to know. Throughout my career, I've also benefited greatly from the supportive environment at Melbourne Law School, whose flexibility has enabled me to engage in so many comparative ventures over such a long period of time. Satisfying though my work has been, what really gives meaning to life is family. And I'm very blessed to be part of a close-knit, supportive and tolerant family. Family are the people you laugh and cry with, relax with and worry about, and rely on without question. Four of them are here today, my daughter Susie, my son-in-law Matt, my son Stephen, and my youngest grandson, Marcelo. It's wonderful to be able to share this occasion with them. Uh, and I thank the Foundation for making it possible uh, to have them here. So in closing, let me again thank the Thai Pr Tang Prize Foundation for the honour of this award. And I also thank the staff of the Foundation for the support they provided for me as laureate over the past year. They could not have been more thoughtful and attentive. Thank you. 再次恭喜宋德斯教授,请教授留步. Thank you and congratulations to Professor Saunders. Please remain on stage. 最后呢,是我们大合照的时间,有请所有得奖人到台上来. So lastly, we would like to take a group photograph with all the laureates. So once again, we would like to invite on stage all the laureates. Professor Jeffrey Sachs, Professor Catalan Carrico, Professor Drew Weissman, Professor Peter Cullis, and Professor Jessica Rawson. Please do join us on stage. 接下来我们要有请前排的贵宾到台上一同合影 So we like to also invite the award presenters and also CEO of the Tang Prize Foundation as well as the board member of the Tang Prize Foundation to join us on stage for our final group photograph with the laureates Thank you 
So please do look at the camera in the center of the room. So the award presenters, please do return to your seats. We now like to invite the family members of the laureates to join us on stage for the group photo. We so again, we'd like to invite the family members who are here to come up on stage with to, for a group photo with the laureates. 也诚如我们刚才几位得奖人在致辞当中所提到的 在他们埋首研究以及工作的时候都是家人作为他们最大的后盾台上人比较多我们稍微整对一下下 好差不多就让我们台上的得奖人跟家属朋友们一起大合照咯Alright, so one final group photo with the laureates and their family members Please look at the cameras in the center of the room 各位貴賓,我們再給唐獎第五屆所有得獎人一個最大的掌聲。Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 Tang Prize Laureates. 唐獎第五屆頒獎典禮到此圓滿結束。Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 2022 Tang Prize Laureates Award Ceremony. 最後我們要提醒 有停车的贵宾呢，请您在离场之前不要忘记到外面的服务台领取停车抵扣券。再次谢谢各位现场的贵宾以及线上的观众朋友们，您的支持。二零二四，我们唐奖再见。Thank you once again for joining us tonight and thank you to all the online viewers. We will see you in the 2024 Tang Prize. Thank you.